By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a very special guest who's joining us. It's Enrico from Venice, Italy. And he's part of the playgroup, the Venetian Alliance. And he has brought a very special life gain deck to the table. So I'm really interested to see this deck in action. I'm really looking forward to it as a brewer who loves to play with exceptional cards. I am playing with a new brew as well. It's called Zombie Disco. Now, just before we start, I wanted to point out, you probably see that we're playing upside down. Now, the reason for this is when I try to flip it in editing, um, it looks like Enrico is, you know, hanging on the ceiling. So <laughs> I just decided to keep it this way. Uh, just, you know, please keep in mind that I'm not a professional editor and I really love playing all these old school matches online, but everybody has a different setup and that sometimes makes it difficult when I'm making these videos to make it look as pleasing for the eye as possible with my limited uh, skill set. That being said, we're now going to do the deck tech. I have pictures of both decks, so if you're interested in that, stick around. If you want to go straight to the game, no worries, pas de problème. Check the description below and click on the timestamp. As for now, we are going to look at the decks. This is my zombie disco deck, and this deck actually is... There are two stories to this deck. You have the story of what the deck wants to do, and you have the story about the flavor of the deck. And I'd like to start with the flavor, because this is actually a story, and the story is that it is a full moon, it is a bad moon, and when it's bad moon, the undead come back to life, and they're looking for a party. So the scave zombies are haunting the streets looking for a party. Then they're hearing a sound, they're hearing a noise, a beat, and they see DJ Zombie Master playing the disc. So they enter the building and they start partying in your living room. So your living room is full of zombies. And before you know it, your zombie, your living room has been turned into a swamp. So that's why the evil presences are here. And of course we have the will-o'-the-wisps because they are the disco lights. So they're preparing the disco lights. Now as the party is turning on, you always have this moment in your party when there is a high. You're feeling fantastic. That's when the unholy strength comes in to the, to the game. But there's also this moment when you're, oh man, you're completely down, you know, you drank too much, whatever. Then you have the weakness for that and of course, the drain life. I'm sure when you look at the art of drain life, it kind of looks like a guy who's intoxicated and kind of, you know, falls down in a corner and just needs needs a moment to, you know, to catch catch his breath. Um, nice thing here is that we have the bog rafts. The bog rafts are those people that you don't really want to have in your party, but they tend to find the back door and all of a sudden they're in your party, which is basically what bog raft does with swamp walk. So it comes in after the party's already in full swing. And then at the end of the party, you need a big show. You need a, you need a, you need a big closer. And that's actually the nightmare who comes in and, you know, comes and joins into the party. Uh, maybe nice here to know is that an animate dead, I guess I'm kind of seeing that as a way to get even more people attracted to the party, hearing the noise and they're coming alive from the dead to join this undead party. Uh, of course you have the royal assassin and when you look closely at the art of royal assassin you can see he's actually standing in an alleyway and he's looking into a pub where people are actually partying so he's waiting for them to come out of the pub. So he's like your your little street dealer that tries to take advantage of the situation, you know, so you have to be careful for him. So that's basically the flavor story of the deck. Let me know what you think. Uh, and then we also have the mechanics. What do I want to do with this deck? Now, obviously this deck is inspired with um, by the Troll Disco mechanics. So the idea of Troll Disco is I'm going to blow up my disc. I have a lot of regeneration creatures and they're going to survive. Now, Zombie Master is going to give my Scape Zombies regenerate. My Willows have regenerate. So they will all survive a disc and then I can keep attacking. That's how simple it is. Then there's also a sub theme. That's of course what the evil presence is. I'm going to give you a swamp. Hey, most of my creatures have swamp walk. Now, sometimes it happens that you blow up a disc and nothing's left. So I wanted to have a powerful card for late game. Now that's obviously my nightmare. Then I have a one-off of Royal Assassin just because it could be so handy. And I'm playing with Demonic Tutor. So having a silver bullet in my deck uh, could be really good. The same can be actually set for the book. The, uh, the tome. The nice thing about the tome, by the way, is it's a living book. So again, I'm kind of seeing this as the song book of the zombie party. You know, when you can, you used to be able to go to the DJ and there would be this, this list, this book, this binder with songs and you could go through and pick a song. I'm kind of seeing that here where um, Master 
he is DJing with his disc and then as you know Zombie Master and then you go to his DJ booth he say hey Zombie Master you have that song and Zombie Master goes oh check the book so you check your tome and you go and look for it and you, you your fingers get sticky and you discover the book is actually alive you know <laughs> it's, it's really cool uh, well I mean I like it I like it let me know what you what you think of the deck curious to hear from you and now we're going to check out the deck of Enrico Okay, and this is the deck of Enrico. So a very interesting deck. Life gain is definitely the theme. Uh, I know he's been working on this. This is definitely a work in progress still. So please keep that in mind. And it all started with this idea that life gain kind of seems, um, you know, underestimated in old school magic. And there are a few very important things that I think, let me know if, if, if you have a different opinion, that I think life gain can give you. Now, first off, life gain can buy you time i think that's maybe the most important thing of life gain it's like a time walk if you get a lot of life and you're back at 20 or you're going to 30 or even to 40 it means you can take a lot of hits a lot of decks in old school rely on combat damage so you just get little chunks of damage every time and by simply gaining life you're undoing that damage so you buy yourself time then the question is what are you going to do with this time when i'm looking at enrico's deck i guess what he wants to do with his time is wait until he has enough mana to deploy a really big hurricane and win the game. Another way that he can win it is with those copper tablets, just by chipping away at you. And obviously he's going to have more life with all that life gain in his deck. Now, another thing that you can do with life, and you, you actually see that more and more, is you can utilize it, you can use it to draw cards. So you've got cards like Greed, you've got cards like Book of Raz, and in this deck, you've got two Sylvan Libraries. Now, maybe I would even play with three Sylvan Libraries because, you know, why not? He's got the life. You want to draw your Sylvan. You want to get that card advantage and, and you can pay that life. You've got Alabaster Potions. You've got Stream of Life. You've got Healing Soth. There's so much life gain in here. Then there's a one-off that I really like in this deck, which is uh, Reverse Damage. I think Reverse Damage is very interesting. It's like a better counter spell for direct damage. If somebody plays a huge Fireball, just with your Reverse Damage, you know, you've got it all fixed. Uh, another card I really like to see is Fountain of Youth. I, I just think it's beautiful art. I do like the flavor text that only the pigeons know the secret of the fountain. I think that's really nice. Um, so yeah, and of course the balance can do some serious work here as well since his deck is almost creatureless. He's got the two Martyrs of Coralis in his brew. Maybe he put that in there to work together with the copper tablet when i see martyrs i'm always tempted to kind of think about um the 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 bottle that you can flip for the gin the five five gin i think that's just a really nice combination to use those two um a bottle of suliman that's the word i was looking for but it's not in uh, in this particular brew now like i said it's very much work in progress but i'm curious to see how this is going to work with my zombie deck i think we're in for some really long games because he's going to gain a lot of life and i'm going to keep blowing stuff up so i'm not sure where, where this game will end but uh let's go to the games and uh, let's let's see what's going to happen so good luck enrico thank you for uh taking your time for being on the channel today and thank you for bringing this wonderful interesting deck let's go to the games game number one and we have enrico on the play he's a player with the sarah angel playmat he's playing with a Life gain deck, life is life, and I'm playing with the zombie disco deck there. And there are two factories, so that means a lot of pressure here from Enrico. Going to 18, and have to pass turn here after two swamps. Not much I can do at the moment. And there's a Pendle Haven. And he's going to swing it again, this time for three probably. Going to go to 15 here. And he's passing turn again. Let's see what I can do. Playing another swamp. No scape zombies, no zombie master. So this is not great because I need something to deal with those factories. Already on 15 here. And is he going to swing in? Okay. Oh, he's actually playing. Um, oh, what's the name of that card again? It deals damage equal to your hand size. So I'm actually getting seven damage. And look here, I'm, it's, things are really going bad from here. I'm on eight. And there's a basic forest here from Enrico. He can actually swing in with four, but I believe he said, you know what? I want to do something else with my deck. So I'm just going to play a stream of life, uh, which is appreciated. You know, you're giving me a fighting chance. I like that. I'm on eight. 
playing a land. Maybe I can now brew something. At least I have my disc, which is active. So if he chooses to attack me here with his two factories, I can at least blow up my disc. Uh, he's on 24. I'm on 8. Just play the Bat Moon. There is the Diamond Valley. And I was actually looking at Enrico's deck list, and I think, I mean, he could really play a Preacher, Preacher Diamond Valley combination. Oh, and the, oh no, I'm not dead yet. There's a Hurricane for four. Remember, he's playing with four Hurricanes, so I can, I can definitely expect another one. I, I think there is a very small chance that I, that I can actually take this game. I think it's, it's close to impossible. Playing a Zombie Master here, already being on four. Let's see what Enrico can do. Can he find another Hurricane? Tapping again, tapping three this time, playing a Tranquility, taking care of my Bad Moon. And playing a Soul Ring here. Passing turn again. Playing another Swamp and just playing a new Bad Moon and Unholy Strength over my Zombie Master. So that means that my Zombie Master is now a 5-5 five five and just swinging in with my Zombie Master. Dealing some damage here to Enrico. It's nice to have such a strong zombie master. <clears throat> Let's see what else is going to happen. And is Enrico going to play tapping two here? Play a disenchant. I want to take care of the disc. He's actually going to disenchant the unholy strength. And it's nice to see this happening here tapping for playing the book and I think I'm mentioning that the book is actually alive and passing turn again let's see what Enrico can do I think he just needs his hurricane and he's won this game And it seems to be asking what kind of cards I have, how big my creatures are with that bad moon. My zombie master is now a 3-4 creature. End of turn, I'm drawing a card. So actually, I'm kind of coming back into this game. I have some control. Tapping two mana here, playing another bad moon. Tapping one land. Am I going to play one of my will-o'-the-wisps? Because they're just one mana. Oh, an evil presence. Playing an evil presence on his Diamond Valley. And if I could just find a zombie here, escape zombies, then I have a 4 4 Swamp Walker and I can do some serious damage. Passing turn here to Enrico playing a Savannah. And of course, I'm just drawing a card at the end of turn with that book, which is a great advantage for me. And it looks like. The game is kind of in a stall situation, at least for Enrico. He cannot really penetrate my defenses anymore with that active disc. And I'm now playing a Bokrath, which is a 3-3 Swamp Walker, but he gets plus 2, plus 2 because of the double bo uh, Bad Moon. And that means I can hit him for 5 next turn because he has that Diamond Valley, which is now a Swamp. And attacking him here for 5. Am I actually going to deal 5 damage here? Ooh, reverse damage. Uh, I just, I really like this deck. I think it's not bad, this reverse damage, because I'm not playing with any X spells. And let's see what Enrico can do here. I thought about adding Howl from Beyond to my deck. I think that could be really cool as well. And let's see. He's looking at his life total. He's back at 20 again. So despite all my attacks, he is still at 20 life. He's counting his lands. That cannot be a good sign. Playing, <laughs> playing an Alabaster Potion. A sorcery from Legends that you can use to gain life, but you can also use it to, um, to prevent. That's the word I'm looking for, to prevent life loss. So in this case, he's playing his Alabaster Potion for nine lives, so he's on 29 now. And I'm just gonna swing in here for, yeah, I guess for nine. So I'm just gonna take those nine life away from him again. He's on 20. And that's a time walk effect that I talked about in the introduction, just by gaining a lot of life. 
You've basically, he's basically gained himself a turn, I guess, with that Alabaster Potion. There's the Scape Zombies. And let's see what he can do. And is he going to... He's playing a basic forest here. Remember, he doesn't have a lot of creatures. He does have Wrath of God. Oh, a regrowth over his Hurricane. And then he plays the Hurricane. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's a game. So Enrico is winning this first game. I have to say, I expected him to kind of kill me much, much faster after that first Hurricane. But he couldn't find the other ones, and that's why it took so long. Um, this is game number one. Enrico, congratulations. Let's go to game number two. Game number two, and it's 0-1 here for Enrico. At least I get to start. Hopefully I can just play out some stuff, and he doesn't have those factories at the start of the game. 20 here. Let's see. Great start. Yes, Zombie Master turned one with my Dark Ritual. That's what I want to see here. There is a basic force untapping here. Tapping two more. Oh, Bad Moon. That means I've got to turn two, three, four powerhouse. Bam! And Enrico going down to 17. Let's see what he can do. Playing a basic planes. Playing a healing soft. <laughs> I just I love this deck. This is so funny. So basically that means all the damage I dealt the previous turn, it's now gone. He's back to 20. And he's passing turn. And playing another card. Can I find escape zombies? to get some more beef on the battlefield. Attacking now for three against, he's going to 17, and then I'm playing the evil presence on his basic plane, turning it into a swamp. So he's going to 17 here, passing turn. And here he goes playing a basic planes, tapping another healing soft. So, okay. We're back to square one again. He's still on 20 after already dealing six damage. And playing a Nevenerals disc here. And if I can get my zombies out and some more zombie masters, I actually kind of have the game in a situation where I want it to be, where I can regenerate my army and he's going to lose his permanence. But the problem is he doesn't have any non-land permanence at the moment. Playing a stream of life, again going back to 20. Oh my goodness, I've now dealt him 9 damage. But it has little effect on Enrico's deck. Attacking him, he's going to 17 again. And playing a Royal Assassin. And I think I'm pointing out to him now that there are actually people partying in the pub. And he's looking at the party. Royal Assassin, by the way, one of the only cards in Old School with actual text on it with that word pub. And then I'm not talking about cards that are signed by the artist. I don't count that in, but just in the artwork with actual text. There's a Tranquility actually taking care of my Evil Presence as well there and of my Bat Moon. So Tranquility is actually a pretty strong card against this deck. And he's playing that land text after that. So that means I'm not going to play out a land here. I'm just going to attack... Dealing three damage again, and finally we see that life total dropping a little bit. He's on 14 now. I've already dealt him 15 damage, but he's only on 14. Or still on 14, I should say. Playing a Savannah there, dual land. Let's see what he can do. Of course, his hurricanes are nice, but not that effective against my zombie deck, since the... Nightmare is the only flying creature in my brew. Attacking again, so he's going to go to 11 if he cannot prevent this damage. And he is going to 11 and pass turn. What can Enrico do here? Playing a factory, so that can be a good blocker to deal um, actually with the Royal, what's really nice to mention about Royal Assassin, by the way, is that it works really good against Mishra's Factory. So, um, you know, if, if you need a weapon against the Mishra's Factory, I can really advise using Royal Assassin. And we actually see it happening here. Now, the Factory in this case 
still has uh, summoning sickness. So, you know, it doesn't apply for now, but, ooh, there's a reverse damage. Okay, going to 13, he's gaining life instead of losing it, so he's buying time again. Uh, what I wanted to say is when you have a factory, that fact, the good thing about a factory is that it can make itself into 2-2 two -two and it can pump itself to 3-3. Three -three. Now, obviously, when you have a royal assassin, uh, you can simply say, okay, you're going to pump it to 3, then it's tapped, it's a tapped creature, and I can kill it. So royal works really well against factories. And here we see Martyrs of Coralis. So Mar Martyrs of Coralis is, I believe, a 2-6 creature? Or was it a 1-6? I believe, I, maybe a 1-6 or a 2-6. Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, it's big. So I'm playing a weakness on it. That way it cannot kill any of my creatures. But I'm not going to attack because it seems a bit pointless at this stage. So I'm going to leave my Zombie Master home because basically Martyrs of Corliss is, is a wall, you know. It's a wall you run into. And there is a regrowth. I wonder what he's going to get. Maybe some more life gain. Actually, <laughs> he brought back a stream of life. And I really enjoy playing against Enrico because for him it's all about the flavor. He really wants to show his life gain deck. Uh, trying to drain him now for some life. Oh, actually taking care of the Martyrs of Corliss. That makes sense because then he doesn't have a blocker for the Zombie Master anymore. And I'm attacking, putting him on 11. And I've just gained 5 life, going to 25 myself. And passing turn here. And we're probably going to see that stream of life now. So he's going to play a stream of life for 2, for 6 life. So he's going to go back to 17 again. Oh my, this, I mean, I think this game could take a very long time. So, I mean, you know, get a drink, uh, get a nice snack. I mean, this can, this can go long. I've been just bashing Enrico for a while now. Finally finding a second zombie master. I do need some bat moons or something. But at least starting next turn, I can attack for four damage instead of two. By, oh, attacking with two, actually, since he's got his Mishra's factory tapped. He's all tapped out. So I'm dealing 3 damage, going to 14 here. And I wonder if Enrico can find... Ah, of course, Healing Sap. Going back, going back to 17. This is like unbelievable. If he can find his Wrath of God, it's a really nice way to get rid of my regeneration creatures because you cannot regenerate um, with Wrath of God. So that's always nice about it. Um, playing a Bad Moon here, swinging in for 6. He's on 11. I mean... He is going down on cards, so I should somewhere, sometime be able to get him down on life as well, you know. Um, attacking again, so that means he will go to 5 now. Animating, blocking, that means, basically chump blocking means he only takes 3 damage here. Going to 8 life. He wants to buy some time, hoping to find a stream of life or another life gain card or maybe a Wrath of God. He's got a few really good cards in his deck to deal with my zombie army. Attacking here for seven. And that's it. That's about it. So, wow. That took a long time. Bashing, 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 bashing. Just like a zombie nation in one of those. I can hear that techno music going. Doo, 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 and I just keep bashing and he keeps gaining life. Uh, okay, that's game number two. It means a 1-1. One, one. means we're going to game number three. Game number three, and uh, it's a 1-1. One, one. And I think, you know, this this game three can go either way. If uh, if Enrico can find his, uh, his Hurricanes, can find his Wrath of God at the right time, he can definitely win this one. On the other hand, if I can just uh, quickly build up my army. Interesting here, turn one, Winter Orb. For Enrico, and there's his Keef Zombies on my side, turn one. Nice, so I've got a 2-2 Vanilla, and I can start beating him down. And then we kind of get what we saw in game two, where I'm really, really dealing a lot of damage, and he's, you know, just trying to survive. On his Savannah, playing an Evil Presence, turning it into a Swamp, attacking here, so he's going to 18, and playing a Willow to Wisp as well. So um, we actually, the nice thing about it, we were playing this game and we were kind of discussing the Winter Orb. And it's always nice when you're playing this new deck, you're finding out is a card working or not working. 
And you know, Winter Orb is a questionable choice because you have a lot of X spells, and with Winter Orb, you cannot untap all your lands, obviously. So after a stream of life, Winter Orb is not that great to have in the game. Same thing goes for that Hurricane or Alabaster Potion. Although Hurricane is a different story because you want to use that as a finisher. So usually there is not a turn after you've cast your Hurricane. Anyway, I'm going to 16 or attacking again with my Scape Zombies. Playing out another land. Remember, we can only untap one land a turn. So he is definitely slowing me down here with that Winter Orb. And he's going to 19 after that Healing Staff. Attacking now, going to 17, tapping all four. Maybe there's a Bok Wrath here. There is the 3-3 Swamp Walker. So that means I can start using that Swamp Savannah to deal some more damage. I can now deal five damage a turn if he cannot come up with a blocker. And it looks like there is no blocker from his side. So possibly I can deal five damage here. Untapping a Swamp. Playing another one. Is there a bad moon? Not a bad moon, but still five damage here means Enrico going to 12. So he needs something here. End of turn playing a disenchant over his savannah. So that means my swamp walking days are over, at least for now. And passing turn here. Playing a Wrath of God. Oh man. That is not great. That is kind of a card I fear with my deck. Well, just because regeneration doesn't work with Wrath. Well, right now I had no, well, Willow, I could regenerate a Willow, but I didn't have a Zombie Master in play. So let's see what I can do. Drawing a lot of lands here, playing another Willow the Wisp. And he, of course, has that factory again, but it's not going to work against the Willow. And it's also not great in combination with a Winter Orb. And just untapping one land at a time doesn't really matter. I have enough here and I'm kind of in top deck mode here. Just having one card in hand left. And we see Enrico with a full grip of cards. What is he going to do? He's playing a stream of life. And this is kind of that non-bow that I talked about earlier between X spells and Winter Orb. So you're playing your X spells, but um, it does mean that for the next... I don't know how many turns you're just busy untapping your lands because it's only one land a turn. I found a zombie master here. He's <laughs> he's playing his spirit link on my zombie master. So again, he's able to stall. Again, it's not it's not the worst thing that can happen. I mean, it's worse if he would remove it. I do really like it that Enrico has chosen for flavor in this deck all the time. So I'm just putting a uh, my own spirit link on there just to show. By the way, so that's a spirit link of Enrico just to clarify. Um, he's not playing with Swords to Plows here, for example. He's saying, well, I don't want to give my opponent life, so instead I'm playing with Spirit Link. And I, I do like it. I like it when you have a theme, you have a story with your deck, and you, and you want to stick by that story. Playing a Martyrs here, of Corliss. So he's got a blocker now as well. So it looks like the battlefield is pretty much uh, stuck at the moment. I'm playing another Zombie Master. And hopefully I can find an Evil Presence to get my Swamp Walk uh, tactic going here playing with the full play set of course already lost one evil presence but still I have three more in the deck so I'm sure I can should be able to find one more also having that demonic tutor to look it up if need be untapping here tapping for two there is a bad moon so all my creatures gain plus one plus one my black ones and they're all black tacking here with willow of course because it's now a one two flyer and he has no flying blocker so that means at least he takes a damage and he's still untapping from that stream of life i mean <laughs> it's just it's uh hysterical and let's see what he can do but i mean if he only takes one damage a turn i mean he can easily uh, get back from that you know one damage a turn is nothing when you're playing against a life gain deck and there's an evil presence. There's the card I'm looking for playing it over his factory because it is a potential blocker attacking now. This is four damage going through. And uh, that means he's going to 15 here. And because I have two zombie masters in play, they give each other regeneration and swamp walk. So that's kind of how it works. Just like um, Lord of Atlantis and Goblin King, these cards have been errata to be merfolks as well. So they don't give themselves plus one plus one or an ability, or in the case of the um, Zombie Master, they don't give themselves regenerate and swamp walk, but they, when you have two in play, they do give each other these abilities. 
And yeah, my camera was glitching a little bit at a certain point in the game. I guess I was here. My cards are a little bit blurry, but it will get better later in the game. I'm putting my hand there trying to fix my camera. And here it is, now it's getting better. Uh, let's see what Enrico can do. He's on 15, I've got my Swamp Walk engine going. I can deal him four damage now, one by air and three via Swamp Walk and tapping another land. You know, and if I can find my uh, my drain life, I think Enrico's gonna be in trouble as well, because look at the amounts of mana I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine mana already. Finding a lot of land this game. And so does Enrico, by the way. Tranquility, this again is a strong card. He does take away his own spirit link, but I mean, that's worth it because he's taking away my bad moon and again, my evil presence. So Tranquility is definitely a powerhouse. And passing turn here, untapping everything. Now, is it worth it to attack with the zombie masters? I don't think so because he's got his martyrs and he's got his, uh, his factory playing a disc, so that could be actually handy. Attacking, then maybe he's gonna animate his factory and then I can activate the disc. Remember, my creatures have regeneration, so they will survive a disc activation. But maybe he has disenchant. I mean, he is playing with disenchant in this deck. Let's see what he can do. He's counting the cards again. <laughs> I guess he's, he's gonna gain some life. Gonna play a stream of life and he's gonna go to 19. Untapping again and I mean, this is why these games take so long. There's just, when you play with life gain, it's nice to see a life gain deck like this in action and to kind of think, okay, so this is what actually happens when you're putting a lot of life gain in your deck. So I think it's interesting to think, what do I want to do with the time that I get from all this life gain? And the question is always also thinking about card advantage. Can you, at a certain point, you need to get cards back because you are playing a spell every time. It is costing you a card to play these life gain spells. So that's why I think I said at the introduction, maybe I would play even with three Sylvan libraries. But now when I see this deck in action, I think, you know, why not play with four Sylvan libraries? Because card draw can be so important. Maybe even play with Book of Rass, where Book of Rass is from the dark, you, you pay six, and you can actually, uh, and then you can pay two mana and two life to draw a card. The nice thing is that you don't have to tap the Book of Rest, so you can do it multiple times. So for four mana and four life, you can draw two cards, which is not that bad, actually. Especially when you're playing a life deck. In the meanwhile, we see that I've cast a Bog Wrath, and that means that my army is slowly rising. There we see, ooh, is he gonna get back the Wrath of God? He is getting back to Wrath of God, Regrowth Wrath of God. I have a little bit of time because of the Winter Orb attacking now with everything I have. It doesn't really matter that much anymore since he's got that Wrath of God. And it's not actually a bad attack. I would have done it regardless, I think. So yeah, he's pumping, tapping one of my, blocking one of my zombie masters and then using his massive Coralist to block my Bokraf and then he gets two damage from the other zombie master. So he's going to 15 here. And now he has to untap, you know, that, that, that Wind Orb is really slowing him down in this game. And he's passing turn again. That means I can have another swing before he can play his Wrath of God. And I'm happy to take advantage of that, of course, attacking again. And he can only block the Bok Raff, meaning he takes four damage. He will go to 11 here. Untapping his second Savannah. So now he has enough to play his Wrath of God. There is the Wrath of God, losing all my creatures here. And I wonder if I can bounce back from this. Counting my lands, will we see a drain life? No, wow, this is perfect. I couldn't have been any better. Playing a nightmare here, it's also flying. Wow, and if Enrico doesn't have an answer for this next turn, he is in trouble. It's, it's hard to see the dice, I believe it's a 12-12. We can count the lands there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. A 12-12 twelve, twelve flying creature, Enrico needs something Next turn, he needs something to stop this nightmare. 
And look, he's, he only has limited amounts of mana because of his own Winter Orb. What can he do? And it's... He's in the tank. He's trying to find a solution. But maybe there is no solution. Playing a Disenchant on his own Winter Orb. So at least he can untap everything next turn. The big problem here is there will not be a next turn because I'm going to kill him now unless he has... No, he's tapped out. There's nothing he can do. Whoa! -ho -ho. Okay, I guess first I untap with everything. And now I do my final swing. Oh, this is just brutal. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So this is... I mean, this is the way... I mean, you want to win with your Nightmare. That's pretty cool, right? 12-12 Nightmare, whew, swinging through the air. Um, it was a really nice match. Thank you, Enrico, for this game. Thank you for showing your deck. And uh, we already had contact uh, through Facebook after this match. And we are definitely going to do a, a second match. We, I mean, I want to give you a new chance, um, you know, to, to see if you can do better. And he also told me that he's going to tweak his live game deck further, make it even better. Uh, I would definitely take out the Winter Orb, but I think you made that conclusion yourself already. Uh, but it's it's great to see what happens when you're putting a lot of live gain in a deck. And it's good to do these, I like to call them experiments, to kind of see, okay, what is actually the strength of, in this case, gaining a lot of life? Or what is the strength of just playing with a lot of creatures? Or what is the strength? And when you're exploring new decks like this and when you're exploring a strength of a deck you also find a weakness of a deck and that's actually what brewers do you brew a deck not necessarily to win games you brew a deck to find new ways new patterns in the game that you can then use later in a milder form in for example competitive magic if that's your goal or if for example in kitchen table magic if you want to show something cool so you start off uh, <clears throat> excuse me you start off with something extreme to discover how it works. And, and, and this is something that uh, often happens with limited magic as well, where you play limited, you have a limited amount of cards, you're, you're using all the cards in a different way, you're using cards you usually don't use, and then all of a sudden you see, hey, this card is actually pretty useful in this and this and this and this situation. And I think the same can be said with Bruce like this, where you really discover, hey, wait a minute, this is what actually happens, this is what I can do, and I've started now at, 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 you know, I'm now at step number one of my brewing process. And, you know, I'm going to take it a step further. So I'm really looking forward, Enrico, to play against you again. So like I said before, he's from the Venetian Lions. They're in Italy, Venice. So, you know, if, if you're going to go there and you're an old school magic player, um, you can, I'm sure you can hit Enrico up through Facebook. And um, and I'm looking forward myself, actually, to come and visit and, and play a game uh, or two or three with the Vanus Lions. Thank you for this game. Um, this is the end of today's episode. If you want to support the channel, I guess you've already done simply by watching this video. Leave a like, leave a comment. If you're not a sub yet, please subscribe. It really helps. Click that notification bell. And of course, we also have a Patreon page and it's getting more and more patrons. I believe we're now at 32, which is Fantastic, because it allows me to get some new equipment, upgrade the channel. Thank you very much for that support. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at the patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.